The moment a lot of people have been waiting for for quite a while has finally arrived. Project Lunar is now publicly available, and I'm going to show you guys how to get it all set up and installed on your Sega Genesis Mini. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe to the channel. It really is one of the best ways you can support the channel. It gives me the ability to work with different brands, companies, and even developers to show you guys some really cool new products and software. I always give you guys my honest opinion to help you guys decide if something's really right for you. So please give the channel a sub and give it a thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated. Now let's get into the video. All right, so here we are. We now have Project Lunar ready to go. And uh, as always, I get my builds and all of my files in advance, so I'm not gonna be able to show you specifically where on the website to download it. But as always, you can just go down to the description down below and all the links will be directly there. So if you guys have been following my videos on Project Lunar, you guys know that Mod My Classic has designed a desktop app to actually, not only to install Project Lunar onto your Sega Genesis Mini, but to also manage all of your games right from within this app. So what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and uh, download the installer, which I've already gone ahead and done, and we're gonna double click on it to open it. Now you guys may get something like this pop up on screen, especially if you're using Windows, and it's gonna say, hey, Windows Defender's detected, something's unrecognized, this, uh, this app might put your PC at risk. Uh, it's totally safe. We're gonna go ahead and hit the more info button, and then we're gonna hit run anyway. So now we're gonna have the Project Lunar Desktop UI Setup Wizard come on. Really simple, just like installing anything else, we're just gonna go ahead and hit next. We're gonna let it install directly onto our C drive, and we're gonna hit the next button again to start the installation. The installation takes no time at all. It only takes about 10 or so seconds, and then we are able to go ahead and close. And as you guys can now see on the desktop, there is a new icon called Project Lunar Desktop. This is going to be the brains of everything that we're gonna need in order to get our Genesis hacked. So I do wanna mention the only physical thing that you're going to need, uh, aside from obviously your Sega Genesis Mini, we are going to need a different micro USB cord than what came in the box with your Sega Genesis. And uh, the reason for that is because the cable that came in it isn't able to transfer the data from your computer to the classic. So what I've gone ahead and done is I just grabbed an old uh, cell phone uh, charging cable. So I've gone ahead and plugged the USB cable into my computer, but I've left it unplugged from my Sega Genesis Classic. What we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and open up the Project Lunar Desktop app. The desktop app's going to open and you're going to see that we have a couple of options. We've got an open slash uninstall option and we've got an open game manager option. Obviously, we haven't installed Project Lunar on our Genesis Classic, so we need to do that first. The first thing that we're going to do, obviously, is click that button. First, what's gonna come up on the screen is uh, the installer and it's gonna to check to see what the mod status of the Genesis is. So because you haven't hacked the Genesis before, it's gonna check that and it's gonna give us a pop-up on screen in just a few minutes after it's gone ahead and checked all of that information out. So now you can see it says no console has been detected. Do you want to start Project Lunar install process? The reason it can't detect anything is because one, we don't have our Genesis connected into our computer yet. And two, we need to get the Genesis into kind of like a recovery mode. It's called an FEL mode. And in order to do that, it's really, really simple, but we are still going to go ahead and say, yes, we want to start the Project Lunar install process. Next, it's going to ask if you would like to open the interactive how to help guide to show you how to install Project Lunar. This is actually a really cool feature. I'm just gonna show you really quickly what this is. So when you hit yes, it's going to actually tell you this is exactly what steps you need to do physically on the console in order to get it into that recovery stage that we need to install Project Lunar on the device. And it's all entirely done at your, um, at your pace. So you can kind of choose how quickly you're going through things. Uh, but I'm not gonna use this. I'm just gonna show you guys and then I'm gonna put some of these images on screen uh, as well, just to kind of help you guys out. So as you can see here, it's going to say, uh, we are waiting for uh, the FEL mode. And the way that you do that is you need to unplug your system, which mine already is. Then you power on the power switch with an unplugged. While that's on, you're going to press and hold the reset button and then you're gonna plug the system back in. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And what you're gonna notice on the actual Sega Genesis Classic is while you're holding the reset button and you plug in the USB cord into the back of the console, the power light's gonna come on and then it's gonna flash off and then it's gonna come back on again. And that's going to indicate that we are indeed in FEL mode. So that's all we need to do. Once the software recognizes that we are in FEL mode, it will automatically start installing the mod directly onto our Genesis Mini. Again, what we need to do is we need to turn the Genesis switch on while the USB cord is not plugged in. Then we're gonna press and hold on the reset button. And while we're holding the reset button, we're gonna go ahead and pop the USB power into the classic. And we are gonna wait for the power light to come on, turn off, and then turn back on. Now, as you can see on screen, we've already detected that we are now in FEL mode and we're gonna start transferring all of the stuff that we need onto the mini console and it's gonna go ahead and do everything entirely for you. You don't have to do anything else at this point. So this process is gonna take about 10 or so minutes. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to fast forward through the process but I am gonna put some on-screen prompts so you guys can see what it's gonna look like both on your Genesis mini console screen as well as what's happening on your computer. All right, so here we are. We are now 100% complete installation is done. And that's more or less it. We now have Project Lunar installed on our Genesis Mini. Our Genesis is now hacked and we can start loading up games. So we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. We're gonna hit finish here and we're done. Next, we can go ahead and open up the game manager. So first thing that it's gonna do, it's going to initialize the local data. It's gonna take a look at the uh, console itself and it's gonna see how much space we actually have internally. It's also going to identify whether or not we are dealing with the Genesis, we're dealing with the Mega Drive Mini, it'll do all of those things in advance. So the first thing that we're gonna see on screen is a little welcome message and it's also going to uh, let us know that we should probably uh, do an additional backup uh, of our internal data to a safe location. So wherever that happens to be, it tells you how to do it. You just click on tools, then advance, then export backup. And that's just to give you an extra level of security so that way you don't run into problems if your classic system ends up getting corrupt or anything. Uh, you'll just have additional backups. We're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And then it's going to say, hey, a sync is required to obtain the actual free space information. Do you wanna perform the sync now? The answer to that is yes. So it's gonna go ahead and scan. It's gonna check out how much space we have. And if you take a look on the bottom of the uh, application, you're gonna see that there is an estimated free space amount, which is gonna be right over here. So it'll say that there's about 149 megabytes of 170 megabytes available for free space. Now, obviously that's not a ton of space. Once you start loading up additional games and then you start getting the artwork for them, you're not gonna be able to get an entire library built into your Genesis mini console this way. Now, that being said, if you guys saw my preview video, you can pop a USB drive into it. It'll do the same process. And then you can load those games onto the USB drive so you can actually have a full library. Additionally, if you want to run emulation station, that is something that needs to be done on an external USB stick anyways. So keep that in mind. Now, I do want to mention that emulation station does not come pre-built on this software. It's actually quite simple. You click on tools, and then you click on manage mods. And as you can see, I don't have any mods that are installed. Uh, you just have to hit install new mod after you've downloaded whatever mod you want from their website. And you can get any of the mods that are available right here. You click this link, then you're gonna go ahead and be taken to the Mod My Classic Project Lunar Mod section. And right now, Emulation Station is there. So what I'll do is I'll create a separate video showing you guys how to get Emulation Station up and running just because there is a little bit more work with it, uh, especially considering you need to have the additional USB drive. Otherwise, you can't have Emulation Station running. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna quickly go ahead and close this. We're just gonna talk about the basic Project Lunar functionality. Uh, first thing obviously we want to do is add a game. So we're gonna hit add new game. Then we need to navigate to whatever game we've got. So if I go over to my 
ROMs folder. Uh, I'm gonna have everything here. I'm just gonna pick one at random. Uh, we'll just do, we'll just choose Aladdin. And what you're gonna notice right away is that there's no information there. We just have the stock Mod My Classic Genesis artwork. What we want to do is hit the get game information button. So we're gonna hit that. It's gonna take just a few seconds and it's gonna populate a whole bunch of different options from the scraper. Uh, there's got the screen scraper match, uh, which is gonna be the first one that pops up and you can see that's the artwork that they provided. Now there is the AU version. There is the Brazil uh, released Mega Drive version artwork. There is the EU artwork. There is the Japan artwork. And then there is the US Mega Drive or Genesis artwork. Uh, because I'm in Canada and North America, I'm just gonna go ahead and select the US Mega Drive artwork. You're gonna notice that not only do we get the artwork, but we get the name of the game, we get the description, we get the release date, we get the number of players, we get the genre, we get everything. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit the add game button. And that's it. That game is now added into our queue. Now keep in mind, just because you've added it into your queue does not mean that that's on your console yet. So what typically you are going to want to do is load up any of the games that you want. Then once that's finished, we're gonna go ahead and hit the sync button. So I'm gonna do that right now. And it's gonna ask if we want to do the sync now. The answer to that is of course, yes. It's going to sync and this only takes about, I'd say maybe a minute to two minutes every single time that it does it. So we're just gonna go ahead and fast forward a little bit here. And once that little spinning sync sign goes away, that means it has completed its sync and we are good to go. As you can see, I've added one game and that has taken away about one megabyte. So I'm gonna say you could probably squeeze another 100 games on here. Uh, that's a safe number. You might be able to get a little bit more, um, but that's what you're gonna wanna keep in mind. You can throw about an extra 100 games uh, on top of what's currently on the original uh, pre-built in games. Now I've had a bunch of people ask me if it's possible to remove the internal games and I don't believe that's an option as of yet. I know that for example the Aladdin game that we just put on we can access the remove game button. Uh, obviously that is something that we can do. We can remove games that we apply but in terms of pre-built in games we do not have access to the remove the game feature. So from my understanding the games that are on there are on there and you cannot remove them unless it's a game that you've already added on. So for example, Aladdin, we can obviously remove that. But yeah, now that we've gone ahead and synced, we've added Aladdin, I'm not going to do much more talking about this on the actual on-screen console. We can actually close this off because we don't need it anymore. And we can actually switch over to our Genesis Mini. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Okay, so now we are on the boot menu right within our Genesis Mini, as you can see. Project Lunar is up and running. Everything seems to look and run really nicely. Now, of course, we have access to RetroArch, which is going to be available right out the gate. As I mentioned, Emulation Station needs to be installed through the tools. And again, I will have a separate video walking you guys through how to get Emulation Station up and running. Uh, I know a lot of people were really eager just to get Project Lunar up and going. Um, but Emulation Station is going to take another day or so before I get a video out, but definitely it is there, it is running, and it is working. So if you are excited about that, just stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah, pretty much what we've got, as I showed you guys in my previous video, the showcase video, you've got your settings if you press the B button, which is just going to essentially allow you to enable and disable different features. You've got a splash screen on boot, I actually like having the splash screen, so I'm going to turn that on. And the next big one that obviously most people are gonna to wanna to do is toggle the uh, CPU speed up. Now this feature has been thoroughly tested and it is very stable, but there is a chance that some games or some things won't run 100%, so they give you the option to kind of toggle back and forth depending on whether or not you need it. Uh, I've left it toggled on pretty much since I've started with the beta versions of this release, and I've never needed to go ahead and go back and switch it back to the stock CPU speed, so uh, just you guys have access to that in case you need it if you guys run into things. So. Absolutely, that's pretty much it. There's a, a few other options, but nothing else really needs to make uh, an adjustment. We're gonna go ahead and press the start button to save. And it's going to say, are you sure you wanna do this? Do you wanna overwrite the old settings? Uh, and if I do that, the console will restart and it'll do that after it's saved. The answer to that is yes. So I'm gonna hit yes. My console is going to restart and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so now that we're back, those settings have been saved. And as you can see, besides settings, we've got an option for network manager. If we go ahead and hit the C button, this is going to give us the option to connect in either a wireless adapter or 
some sort of other networking uh, device. Now, I don't have my OTG connected into my device just yet, but if you do have an OTG that you were using with your PlayStation Classic, and if you have that uh, Wi-Fi dongle that I had made reference to, the TP-Link device, you can actually connect that in and you can access Wi-Fi and you can do all of the things that you would normally do, especially on RetroArch, right from your classic console. You can select your network and things like that right from here, and it's, uh, it's pretty slick. Uh, additionally, if you are one of those people that has absolutely no interest in RetroArch or absolutely no interest in Emulation Station and what you wanted to do was only use Project Lunar, if you hit the start button, you can actually set the auto boot to toggle on. And what that means is that as soon as you turn on your console, it'll go straight into Project Lunar. You won't see this boot menu. You're not gonna be bothered with RetroArch and Emulation Station or any of those things. Uh, it'll go straight into Project Lunar and then that's it, you don't need to really worry about it from that point on. Now I of course do lots of tutorials and I do lots of work with this thing so I need access to everything so I'm going to leave that off but what we'll do is we're just going to jump right into Project Lunar quickly and as you can see it's going to ask us what language we need. I'm going to select English and here we are. So what we need to do is uh, I'm going to rearrange the uh, display by alphabetical just so I can see the games that we loaded on. And as you can see, once I made that switch, you can see Aladdin is labeled and displayed here. Uh, and the cool thing is, of course, it's going to show you both in uh, the side spine art view as well as the standard front uh, cover art view. So you have access to everything right on here. So there has been some changes since the last video I made. Obviously one of the big problems that they had was that there was no way uh, once you've entered into Project Lunar to get back to the boot menu. Uh, that's now changed. So you actually have the ability, uh, there's a separate icon here called boot menu. You can click on that. It'll take you back out to the boot menu. And actually we also have a retro arc option too. So you can bounce kind of back and forth between whatever you want to write from within here. So that makes things really nice. Uh, I don't believe there's one for emulation station. There may be one once we get it installed and I'll see that kind of once we do that uh, tutorial video. So, but that's pretty much it guys. This is the video a lot of people have been waiting for. It is now finally released. You guys can go ahead and download that link in the description below. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel because I'm gonna have a ton more stuff coming out anytime that there's a new update or new features with the Genesis Mini and with Project Lunar. I'm gonna be one of the guys to get it out to you guys as quickly as humanly possible. So definitely I would appreciate it if you guys could subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys are planning to do with this mod, what you guys wanna see if there's a feature that you think would be really handy and would be great for the community. Let me know down below and I'll pass that information along. If you haven't joined the Discord, please join the Discord. There's so much, uh, so many resources, and there's a lot of help that you guys can get right from within that Discord. So the link to that is also in the description down below. But that's all I've got. Thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate it so very much. And I will talk to you guys again real soon.